Welcome to the Kiefer's Hot Rod Shop YouTube channel. I'm Nick Kiefer. This will be part one of a video series taking an in-depth look at the build of this 25.3 chassis 69 Nova. All right, we're getting started with our straight piece of chrome ollie to make our number one bar. Getting ready to make our first bend. All right, so for the number one bar tube I designed, I'm needing an 11 and a half degree bend. And so I stopped the bender at 10 degrees and measuring with this, I'm showing a little shy of the 11 and a half. For some reason, the bender will show a little bit uh, shallower angle than what it's actually bending even when I zero the gauge out so I just like to take it slow and make sure I don't bend past the target. Alright now when you put a tube back in the bender or just in the bender in general you have to make sure you're at the correct angle. And the quick way I like to do this is to send this long ruler down uh, off the edge of the bender. I like to look down and make sure that's consistent all the way down. As long as that gap is consistent, you're straight in the die. So now I'll add a degree to this tube and pull it out and measure and see, see what we get. Awesome, so I'm reasonably close to my target angle, and I might be just a tiny bit straight compared to the bend I need, but I don't mind leaving it there because that'll give me a little room later if I need to tweak it to get it perfectly true. So I'm going to measure everything out and go on to the next bend. Ahead of time, I've calculated everything out considering the height and width that each bend will take up. What I've come up with is that this 11 and a half degree bend with a six and a half inch radius to match my bending die will take up a little over an inch and a quarter. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring from the line of my first bend, 10 and a half, and I'm adding a little over an inch and a quarter. And that line is where I'm going to want to measure from to go to my next bend. So I've calculated that over here. And so horizontally between bends, I've got 13.9741 inches calculated. Um, the accuracy of the equipment I'm using uh, really calls for maybe a sixteenth of an inch of, of resolution or so I'm not really worried about that twenty six thousandths of an inch when I measure and calculate these things. I've rounded that to fourteen even and calculated not only the incline of the triangle that makes but also the hypotenuse length which is a little over 14 and a quarter inches so what i'm going to do on this tube is i'll go from that mark and for accuracy i'll line up a line so one inch or 10 inches or whatever you may choose and then i'll measure making sure to add that difference at the end 
So here we are. I line that up at one inch. I need just over 14 and a quarter. And so I make that go up just over 15 and a quarter. And that's where I'm gonna line the die up with the mark I've made on the die to initiate my next bend, which will be a 23 degree bend. When you get to this point where you have to bend the opposite direction of the previous bend, you're gonna have to flip it in the die, uh, meaning you turn it 180 degrees because this only bends in one direction. So what I need to do in order to line it up is go ahead and and make this mark on the opposite side of the tubing. It's best to measure this rather than to estimate. Um, what you can do is just measure from the straight end of the tubing, just in a straight line. It makes it really easy. You do want to make sure that your cut is true, um, it, it, at least within reason, or it'll it'll skew that that number. All right. Yep, both marks on there, measured from the end. And also, it's, it's not a bad idea to verify from both ends, just to make sure there's not some kind of issue. And this is where it gets really important to make sure the tubing is level in the bender. Um, otherwise, you will get a jog in your tubing. And you want to make sure this distance is consistent throughout, sweeping back and forth. I like to check the top and bottom. It's a little hard holding the uh, camera here, but it can give you kind of an idea. I've got everything zeroed out here. I've got the indicator pointer pointed to zero, and I'm going for a 23 degree bend here. So I think I want to stop around 21 and a half or 22, and go ahead and measure it. Right, here it goes. Right, let's go to 24 and just kind of see where it leaves me here. Alright, so that's 19. You know, so you can see it's got about 5 degrees of spring back. Um, so let's take it up to uh, 26 and see that leads us. Alright, and that's 21 even, maybe maybe a touch more. So, that'll be a good place to pull this out and measure. Alright, so measuring the angle here, uh, it's looking like I'm getting about 22 degrees. Um, and I was shooting for 23, so I might go ahead and at this point just put it back in there and um, and, and give it another degree just to, just to get closer to our target. Um, but it's, it's worth having to do that versus having to make a whole new piece or sometimes you can straighten this tubing just a little bit, um, clamping it down, but obviously you don't want to rely on, on doing that. So let me give it just a little more. So I've got this thing off zero it out at about 21 degrees I pull it tight and it's never a bad idea to get that pointer right where you, you want it in your path of vision pull that sucker tight a couple times and just make sure everything's loaded up and ready to go um, pays off later of course but anyway uh, ready to go I'm going to bend past my target a little bit. I'm just adding about a degree. So, I'm watching this thing. Okay, so, most of the way there. I'll bump it a little bit more. about a half a degree yet, so. All right, sweet. Now we're sitting at 22 from 21, just about, so 
I'm going to go ahead and, and measure this thing up and see if we're ready to go on to the next bin. Cool. So I've got this angle finder set up, 23 degrees, and got everything lined up, and it's looking like the angle's just, just about perfect. I like to lay this ruler out against this leg uh, on, on tubes in this shape, and just kind of make sure I'm targeting uh, where I'd like, like it to become flat again. Um, I need to, once again, use my measurements and lay everything out. This 16.5663 dimension is from the very center line of this curved tube to all the way to the outside of that outside bin. Using that number, I can figure out the entire horizontal width of the curved portion of the tube and I can also calculate fans blowing my stuff away here I can also calculate uh, using all these various dimensions that I've tabulated ahead of time where each bin needs to start and stop one thing I've noticed that really doesn't work well is eyeballing the beginning and end of the bin. You might notice the outside of the bend is a little softer than the, than the inside, which I don't know if you can really tell. Sometimes in the light you can see. And, and that's just because the die has to be shaped in such a way that the tubing won't kink. But I've had the best luck going with my calculated dimensions and transferring them to the tube as I've been. And it just kind of keeps everything in check and keeps it dimensional. Now what I'm doing for this final bend is I'm measuring it in multiple ways. So not just the straight after this bend, but I'm also verifying all the way from the beginning end of the tube. I'm adding all that up to make sure I arrive at the same dimension. Uh, also, you might notice here that with the ruler lined up straight, I'm catching this a little, a little shy of where it probably will straighten out, and that's actually not a bad thing. That just means that this might need to be bent here just a little more. And I don't mind leaving it a little short of angle versus risking bending it just a tiny bit too much. Switching directions with the bending die. So measurements have to be copied over to the other side. Put the mark on the other side so you can be lined up with the die. All right, and once again, it's very crucial to make sure the tube is straight in the die at this point. We're aiming for an 11 and a half degree bend. So I'll bring it up to maybe ten and a half or so and measure. So if we go right to ten, about three degrees, then back. Let's bring it up to about thirteen, nine and a half, fourteen and a half, to about ten and a half. All right, so we're back at the bench here. I've got this set up to about 11 degrees. Looking like we've got a pretty good uh, match here. And it's 11 degrees, sorry, and maybe a little bit more. So um, the next trick is gonna be putting a straight edge flat to flat and, and seeing where we're at. All right, awesome. So I've got it lined up with the straight edge here and I'm seeing just a little bit of a gap towards the inside of this side and maybe a little bit more on the inside of this side and measuring the angles of either leg of this thing. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this another 
degree or so. Tighten that up and probably close this gap up just about perfectly. So uh, otherwise, um, looking at my design here, I had three and a quarter and that is to like a perfect hard broken corner. Um, so obviously the radius is going to take up some of that. About an eighth of an inch. And measuring what I've got, it's looking like just a little bit over three and an eighth. So that's good. Um, and it's good to check all these things and, ma and make sure you're you're close. Uh, in in respect to every part of the tube, and, and that way you can you can make sure everything's where you want it. So I'm gonna give this a little more angle. All right, I'm giving it one more check. Make sure it's straight in the die. All right, let's get this thing just about one more degree of bend. Go ahead, pull it out, measure it, and see what we got. All right, looks pretty good. This thing set down on that tube pretty nicely, but went just a little far on this one. So what we're going to do is tweak it just a little bit and try to get it just perfect. Here's my super high-tech way of straightening a bend like this out just a tiny little bit. Uh, it, it involves... Uh, weight, gravity, and that clamp over there. Sweet, so you've just got a tiny little bit of gap on the insides, um, but I took that gap on the outside away from this side, and um, it's nice and symmetrical. I stuck it back in the machine and just tweaked it a little bit, and I've got this thing pretty much perfectly aligned. And you know, one more good check to make at this point is that droop depth, and we're still looking at about three and an eighth. So that's perfect. That's right, right on the money where we need to be. And just putting a little extra work into it, got it nice and straight. So, um, definitely worth making your calculations, doing some trigonometry and 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 taking your time to measure everything out and and you can make a really nice bent piece of tubing like this if you just put the work into it so this turned out pretty sweet be back at you with more later thanks for watching i would be honored if you'd like and subscribe see y'all again soon